Hello again, and welcome to How Not to Diet Book Club, week 11. We read pages 301 through 330, and yay, we finally are getting to the weight loss boosters. Uh, Dr. Greger has already told us the why of eating a plant food, whole plant food diet, and now we're getting into the nitty gritty tips and tweaks of how to speed up the weight loss. Uh, his first booster is vinegar. Vinegar has been used for centuries as um, a weight loss treatment, as a treatment to lower blood sugars, and it is also an appetite suppressant. Vinegar uh, helps to burn abdominal fat, to, especially the dangerous visceral fat around our internal organs. Two tablespoons during the day um, is the dosage and it helps to lower blood sugars, to uh, reduce diabetes risk, uh, even better than prescription uh, drugs for diabetes. Um, it increases your satisfaction and satiety, but Dr. Greger says don't drink it straight, it'll burn your esophagus. You wanna um, have your two teaspoons three times a day, spreads it out and have it with food. Um, he also talked about yacon syrup. I've never heard of that, have you? Uh, it is a sweetener that comes from the root of the yacon tree. It is half as sweet as honey with only a third the calories. And they did a 120 day study with a large number of people and the average weight loss was 30 pounds and four inches off their waistlines. So it's a very effective um, weight loss booster. Uh, <clears throat> Yakon syrup has fructans and our bodies can't digest the fructans in there. So they travel down to the large intestine and our uh, good bugs love to eat fructans and they <clears throat> um, help with our weight loss as well. Some other appetite suppressors that Dr. Greger talked about were chia and flax. He said flax works a little bit better than chia, but you wanna grind both of them. And uh, they not only suppress your appetite, but they make you eat, they help you to eat fewer calories than even the next meal. Um, flax has tons of wonderful benefits, um, but as a weight loss uh, booster, they had a, one of the studies was a 12 week study and the average weight loss was 20 pounds and four inches off their waist. So it's very effective at uh, weight loss. Uh, cumin is also an appetite suppressant. It's one of the most common drugs, <laughs> most common spices, not a drug, uh, in the world. Uh, pepper is number one and cumin is number two around the world as far as spices go. Uh, Cumin lowers blood pressure and it helps with weight control and uh, losing inches as well, and it's cheap. Another weight loss appetite suppressor is black cumin, which is not in the same family as cumin. I don't understand that, but anyway, uh, black cumin is little tiny black seeds and um, they help to lower cholesterol, lower triglycerides, lower blood pressure, and in studies, uh, black cumin was shown to be as effective as statin drugs in lowering blood pressure. Uh, black cumin also helps to lower blood sugar and to lessen the symptoms of menopause. So lots of benefits from black cumin and it, uh, the dosage is one quarter teaspoon per day, which is really small, but I think he said you need to grind them um, for best benefit. Next, Dr. Greger talked about chronobiology, which is the study of the rhythm of our internal clocks. And if you've ever had jet lag, you realize, oh, I'm out of sync with my regular rhythms and it takes you days to get back to your normal flow of things. Um, Chronobiology, those internal clocks, uh, affect our mental, 
physical and emotional well-being. Uh, they're controlled by the rhythm of the sun, moon, and seasons. Um, mostly it has to do with light and how light affects our bodies. He asked the question, should we skip breakfast? And there are lots of studies done on that. Um, interesting, he asked the question, how did we start thinking that breakfast was the most important uh, meal of the day? And in 1920, the father of public relations, Ed Bernays, um, developed a campaign to convince women to start smoking. And that was so successful that a pork company hired him to develop a campaign to sell more pork, bacon, and sausage. And his campaign was breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And he said it was pure propaganda to, mani to, yeah, to manipulate the general public. And he was very successful because that philosophy still holds today. It's not just what we eat, but when we eat it. Because of our circadian rhythms and the way light affects us during the day, um, it affects our general um, body clock as well as, and I didn't know this, each organ in our body has its own internal rhythm, its own independent um, body clock, and they work together so that we can stay in balance. Um, he talked about if light affects us and if our circadian rhythm affects um, how we feel emotionally, physically, and mentally, then the drugs that we take, would pro it, we need to find out the best time to take them um, according to our natural circadian rhythms. And um, most doctors talk about the best time to take blood pressure medicine is in the morning. However, many studies have been done on this and uh, if you take blood pressure medications at night, right before you're going to bed, your circadian rhythm will help you to process it better. It reduces, um, well, taking those blood pressure medicines at night gives better blood pressure control, less heart attacks and strokes, and it cuts the risks of death by heart attack in half. So we need to let our doctors know about this research because, and even if our doctors don't know, the people we love need to know this, that the best time to take blood pressure medications is at night. Next, Dr. Greger talked about a method of eating according to um, our circadian rhythms. And he calls it the King Prince Popper method. They did a 12 week study where People in the morning ate the biggest meal, ate like a king at breakfast, and then ate a smaller meal at lunch, ate like a prince. And in the evening, they ate their smallest meal, they ate like a pauper. So 50% of the calories for the day were eaten at breakfast, 30% at lunch, and 20% at dinner. They also had a control group that ate just opposite of that. They had the biggest meal at night, and the smallest meal in the morning. And after 12 weeks, um, they collected the data and the average person in the big breakfast group lost 19 pounds and two inches off their waist in the 12 weeks, whereas the group that ate late only lost eight pounds on average. So it was twice as much weight loss eating breakfast in the morning. Dr. Greger reported on studies that uh, showed we burn far more calories if we eat early in the day rather than later in the day. So he encourages an earlier breakfast and eating your big meal first. Uh, this allows you to have better blood sugar control and uh, better weight loss. He talks about nighttime can really um, be troublesome for eating 
because our metabolism slows at night, which makes sense. Our body is slowing down for sleep. So we don't need um, to be creating more and more energy in, in our muscles. Um, we get triple the benefits for eating breakfast. That would be burning more calories, more pounds off, uh, lowering cholesterol and trigl triglycerides, better blood sugar control, and overall better health by eating our breakfast early. So for the next 30 days, I'm going to do a grand experiment. And at the end of the 30 days, I will report to you, uh, be accountable for how well I stuck with my goals and the pounds lost and inches lost. And these are my goals. I want to do intermittent fasting in a six hour eating window because I snuck ahead and that's coming up. Um, I want to eat, have an 18 hour fasting window and six hour feeding window. I want to start earlier in the day than I have been. I want to eat breakfast at 10 and then stop eating at four during this 30 day trial experiment. I want to ha try out the King Prince Popper method by eating 50% of my calories for breakfast, 30 for lunch, and then 20 for my last meal. Um, I already use vinegar, but I haven't thought about separating it into two teaspoons three times a day uh, for as, all the wonderful benefits that vinegar provides. I ordered some Yakon syrup from Amazon and he recommends not to have more than four teaspoons of that per day. So when I sweeten things like uh, my uh, salad dressings and stuff, I'll use Yakon syrup instead of date syrup, just to test it out. Um, I am already using chia seeds, flax seeds, cumin, and black cumin, so I will continue that, and I will not skip breakfast. Um, I want you to think about what your goals are uh, as you read this information and test this out. Now, you may not need to lose weight if you don't. Just eat, 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 you lucky person. But those of us who do need to uh, lose weight, of course, we want to stick with a plant food diet. Whole grains, intact, uh, minimally processed beans and grains, and enjoy a rainbow of colors of fruits and vegetables. Good luck with your goals, and I'm excited about mine. Remember, you matter. Never give up. I'll see you next week. Bye now.